नमस्कार भैरवा और काल भैरवा शैवा और वज्रायरा डीटी वर्शिप बाय हिंदूज एंड बुद्धिस्ट यू हर्ड ऑफ हिम लॉट ऑफ यू मे बी डेविटीज बट टूडे विथ आर स्पेशल गेस्ट दी तंत्र साधका मेनी ऑफ यू नो राजी नंदी ही विल पुट दी हिंदू कंसेप्चुअलाइजेशन ऑफ भैरवा इन परस्पेक्टिव वेलकम टू द शो राजी नमस्कार Namaskar. So Rajarshi will explain to us how, in the Trika system, Bhairava represents the supreme reality, synonymous to Parabrahman. Uh, the significance of Bhairava as Danda Pani, uh, he who holds the Danda in his hand to punish sinners, and whose Vahana is uh, Swashwa, symbolically a dog. We will also cover as we move forward in the discourse. the various legends associated with bhairava and how a certain conception of the god is to be approached with a specific kind of sadhana i can already see in the youtube analytics that uh, people not only from india but also from nepal indonesia sri lanka and even a few from japan are among the audience so that's great uh, when uh, rajeshi and i make the made the announcement of the program devotees already started asking questions so uh, rajeshi has picked some from his facebook wall and mine if some really serious questions are posted on youtube or facebook during the live session we will try to accommodate them in the duration of the next one and a half hours the stage is all yours rajeshi thank you uh, so before we start a uh, very simple pranam to para bhairava who is the uh, primordial deity on whom we will be discussing today um, as those who are more scholarly oriented they might be aware that uh, uh, bhairava upasana especially among the hindus was one of the most uh, important uh, devatas uh, specifically in the kashmiri tradition where uh, bhairava was not one but there are multiple um, multiple forms multiple kinds of bhairava and uh, there were three specific kinds of uh, agamas uh, one of them were the rudra agamas the bhairava agamas the shaiva agamas through which the tantras were inspired and uh, many legendary upasakas and uh, you know spiritual geniuses acharyas and polymaths had um, uh, come along that stream Uh, of these uh, three formations three kinds of agamas it is the bhairav agamas which were considered as non dual non dual is advaita but not necessarily advaita vedanta so we have to understand that non duality can be of various kinds so this uh, is extremely crucial not only at a theoretical level but even for an upasaka of the devata that uh, bhairav upasana eventually leads to and it uh, it enters into a very deeper state and causes uh, a non dual equation between the upasaka and the devata unlike for example uh, other forms of shiva which or rudra we we won't go into there at this moment because we are focusing only on bhairava so there used to be bhairava for example forms like swachhand bhairava then there was ratishekar bhairava there are many multiple forms navatman bhairava more or less uh, every shakti upasana had a corresponding bhairava as one of the primary devatas uh, whose uh, you know the the vidyas inspired by bhairava had created tremendous amount of uh, knowledge of the tantras uh, of of uh, you know an inspiration provided to exceptional amount of upasakas and brilliant sadhaks and acharyas who had come especially in in the kashmiri system and eventually from these bhairava agamas the bhairava practices which had a correlation to uh, 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 the kapalika practices and some of the uh, the proto what what we know today what we know today very uh, loosely as the augur practices their proto version of those practices 
were all somewhere or the other linked to the upasana of bhairava and from bhairava eventually comes into the worship of of the goddess as shakti from this ancient arrangement and i am not going too deep into the philosophical aspect but let's come something more to the more practical aspect of how uh, today somebody looks at bhairava so over time for whatever historical reasons that stream of bhairava upasana that was there very prominent in kashmir at one point kind of ebbed uh, and bhairava eventually transformed uh, into two two angles of two me, you know two um, two methods of approach one was if you are a shaiva upasaka uh, somebody in the you know the shaiva siddhanta system etc then bhairava becomes the kshatrapala he is the protector of that area he is the protector of the that space he is the guardian of that space whereas in the tantric conception bhairava is he is first and foremost a guru he is the one who gives the vidyas every single tantra that you pick up you'll have bhairava a shiva or bhairava speaking to bhairavi and explaining how the tantric processes what are the methods to go about what to do so he becomes a primary guru of the path he becomes a guide of the path and he becomes a deity who um, who is also the kshatrapala here but here the kshatra is the body of the upasaka the body and mind of the upasaka he transforms the upasaka such that he is able to handle experience uh, at a more real level the power of the great mahavidyas and the other shaktis because it's one thing to know the theory of everything it's another thing to actually experience it in a way that is fruitful that causes a transformation so bhairava upasana uh, from that ancient time it, from that stream it, and then also we have a lot of bhairava upasana that happened uh, in nepal still happens uh, in india specifically you'll find um, in ujjain in kashi these are the two uh, primary areas where bhairava and different forms of bhairava upasana is prevalent uh, those who are upasakas of the sri vidya tantra they would be knowing that uh, at least in some of the marks some of the major marks parts of sri vidya vatuka bhairava upasana is extremely important in there vatuka uh, various paddhatis are mentioned so more or less bhairava is one of the deities who not only creates the uh, the base for the sadhana for the upasaka but he also acts eventually as a guru to the upasaka if he or she is capable of uh, taking that depth so uh, i think let's uh, go to some of the questions that have come because i feel that the questions are wide ranging and they cover all the important aspects that uh, you know, i was thinking of right. speaking on so let's uh, begin with history then yeah uh, history and then of course uh, the forms of bhairava right so as i mentioned the history of bhairava upasana starts from kashmir eventually and then it uh, it from there it, uh, it it goes and integrates into itself into the shakta tantra as a very important aspect of bhairava even in sampradayas which are more focused on shakti for example if those sampradayas which worship uh, kali Uh, there is still going to be at least one mantra given to mahakal bhairava who is the who is the bhairava of kali so every mahavidya every great shakti will also have a corresponding bhairava shakti, bhairava uh, along with them and the grace of that bhairava is extremely important to have a real engagement with the shakti it's one thing to know all the processes there are people who have multiple dikshas and various theoretical knowledge it's another to attain to a state where you can have a direct communion with the power and that is where bhairava kripa anugraha is extremely important because he is the deity who can teach you how to actually understand what is shakti upasana uh, among the primary forms of bhairava most popular is uh, the ashta bhairava actually there are in some texts there are sort of 52 different forms of bhairava some of them are uh, forms which are of less potency Uh, for example kshatrapala bhairava is uh, is a bhairava who protects a specific area he has a localized uh, uh, localized manifestation and a very uh, specific geographical domain in which his power will manifest that is a kshatrapala bhairava uh, when uh, the same kshatrapala comes to a larger area uh, for example a temple or something then obviously he becomes a more powerful deity whereas the kshatrapala can also work in any house for example if you are doing bhairava upasana at home there is always going to be a kshatrapala force that is that gets activated immediately the moment uh, bhairava or shakti upasana happens at home from there 
we have the uh, eight Ashta Bhairavas, the eight primary Bhairavas who are uh, <coughs> guardians of the eight directions and not just guardians, they have specific domains of uh, uh, power, domains of uh, specific areas where they are extremely uh, proficient, not only proficient, but they can bless their Upasakas with great amount of Vidya and uh, capacity in those specific areas. Uh, for example, <clears throat> if somebody worships Ruru Bhairava, uh, it can give you the power to uh, uh, have certain degree of Gurutvam, which is a knowledge, more depth in knowledge, not just knowledge, but you may even be able to, uh, in a way, sort of revive something that has been dead in a particular place. Consider like a, when I was told this example by somebody who's a very high order Bhairava Upasaka, uh, from whom I'd learned a lot. Uh, uh, suppose there's a desert, nothing grows there. The blessings of Ruru Bhairava, if somebody has, and he does a sadhana of Ruru Bhairava there, you can actually, even in that dead space, you can bring life back. That is one of the one of the features of Ruru Bhairava. Like this, all the Ashta Bhairavas have their own specific powers and domains. Over time, these Ashta Bhairavas were paired with the Ashta Matrikas also. And as Shakti Upasana uh, became more prominent, then the worship of the Matrikas became more prominent than the worship of the Bhairavas. But even now, the Bhairava Upasanas, uh, those who do it, and there are people, not too many, but there are who specialize in one of the eight Bhairavas, Ashta Bhairavas, uh, they experience a certain degree of knowledge specific to the domain of those Bhairavas. So beyond the Ashta Bhairavas, there is, uh, of course, the very famous Vatuka Bhairava, who's Bhairava in the form of a child, an eight, nine-year-old child, who was extremely popular across uh, Bhairava Upasakas across India, not only among Sri Vidya Upasakas, but even those who are uh, more not uh, not not initiated into Sri Vidya, but also general Bhairava Upasakas. Vatuka is an extremely popular form. Then beyond that, there is Kala Bhairava, who is uh, one of the most largest and the greatest manifestations of Bhairava. And then finally, there is Mahakal Bhairava. Beyond Kala Bhairava, even there is Mahakal Bhairava. But Mahakal Bhairava Upasana is more, let's say that, in the Bhairava Krama, it is the ultimate thing that one can do, actually. So these are the different, more or less, the different forms of Bhairava that Upasakas relate to. All right. So let's move uh, to the next question. And let me uh, tell the uh, part of the audience that may be wondering what is going on under the screen. Well, we are, uh, you know, for the convenience of uh, posterity, we are also... Uh, showing you the different legends associated with Bhairava. So since a lot of space cannot be taken on the screen, so we are showing one or two sentences at a time, but it's a continuum. Uh, you know, uh, you cannot separately read a sentence. It has to be in the story form. Yes, uh, Rajarshi, let's take the next question, which yeah. is, uh, uh, I, I think we have picked most of these questions from Facebook, right? Yes. Right. So the uh, relation between uh, dogs and Bhairava is the next question. Okay. So yeah. <clears throat> every deity has a Vahana. Vahana is uh, 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 a vehicle that carries the stamp, the energy of the Devata. So Bhairava's vehicle is our dogs. And dogs become extremely important in Bhairava Upasana. Eventually, if you keep doing Bhairava Upasana, it is going to transform your equation with dogs. There is no, no two ways about it. So to look at it in another way, uh, if uh, I think somebody had asked me once that what is the sign that you know that a person may not be suitable for Bhairava Upasana? One of the things is that if you have, if you're allergic to dogs, I'm not saying you have to be a pet lover specifically, you, you, you know, go into an animal organization. But if you're not, uh, you know, averse to the idea of dogs, you can worship Bhairava. But if you have a certain degree of resistance in your mind towards dogs, then Bhairava Upasana, Bhairava's blessing is not going to come so easily to you. You have to get out of that thing. Uh, dogs are extremely important because eventually, as one starts Bhairava Upasana and goes to a greater depth in the Upasana, uh, let's say if, if it's a scale of 0 to 100, uh, sort of about 30 to 40 percent of the Upasana you can complete at home. You, if you are if you are very capable and if you if somebody even does up till that 
you will start seeing tremendous uh, changes and tremendous um, uh, uh, things that are not easy to explain in words that's already going to happen and you'd be a very advanced to pass it by the way but beyond 40 percent of the sadhana if you have to go even deeper into bhairav upasana you cannot do it at home completely you'll have to go to a more natural setting bhairav is eventually a kind of deity who loves um, uh, settings that are more lonely settings that are a little bit away from human beings secluded uh, yeah yes secluded more forested areas cremation grounds deserted places that is where bhairava absolutely loves those settings and as one goes very deep into bhairava upasana at least occasionally you will have to go to those places to do those sadhanas mm -hmm. now these places the moment you step out of the protection of your home home energy is something you more or less know you know how many people are staying there what it feels like etc the moment you step out of that zone the comfort zone into those areas uh, there the equations completely change because you have no idea what kind of forces beings are present in those areas what kind of energies have been invoked there in earlier times uh, what may be present there it is here that various other things in the tantra sadhana come into play for example you must know how to protect yourself one of the basic things uh deek bandhana then you know uh, deho bandhana protection of other things etc even before you enter into the sadhana and in those settings in those exceptional settings in fact uh, the whole point is that in those settings as you keep doing sadhana it is going to cause an upsurge of all uh, whether you call it fear or things like that which are which are embedded into the human mind for every individual and there you'll have to confront them once you confront them you go out beyond that this is one of the things that bhairava is famous for he makes you fearless eventually bhairava is the uh, is, is shiva who destroys fear for the upasaka eventually because there is nothing absolutely nothing no situation human being um, animals, uh, anything else, anywhere uh, that can cause uh, fear, that is one of the blessings that Bhairava gives eventually. Not, not on day one, but yeah, eventually it comes. So this liminal settings, they cause a psychological pressure in the Upasaka. And this pressure, along with the mantras, along with the process of the sadhana, they will help you to experience, break, you know, sort of make your mind take a plunge from the mundane and the rational in which it is engaged in, and enter into a zone which is what, uh, let's say, the occult zones, the astral planes, etc. It, it, that is where it prepares your mind. In fact, it's very interesting that the number that's associated with Bhairava is 8. The Tithi that is associated with Bhairava is Ashtami. Ashtami, uh, even uh, with somebody with basic understanding of uh, Vedic numerology or Vedic Jyotisha, 8 is, uh, is the Rashi which causes death and transformation. Yes. So hmm. Bhairava is the deity who... who is that form who's going to cause a transformation, whether you like it or not, eventually. That is the path to spirituality. Because if everything was is to remain exactly as it is, there's no point in doing a sadhana. You are what you are anyway. So there in those settings, it is the dogs who are going to be your closest friend. They are the ones who will signal if there is a danger. They are the ones who will be your companion. They are the ones who will sit beside you. They are the only ones you will be able to trust completely. Nobody else, no other animal. And that is where you understand why it is colloquially uh, and uh, you know classically understood that the uh, the blessings of Bhairava come through the way the dogs behave with you in those settings. And here is a catch here, by the way. If you have a pet dog in a house, it is obviously going to behave well with you. That is not an indication of Bhairava's blessing. A okay. completely unknown dog in a completely unknown setting is non-aggressive to you. That means that you are suitable for going into the higher ranges of Bhairava Pasana. Okay. All right. So yeah. uh, the next question then we yes. All right. Bhairava Upasana versus uh, Shiva Upasana. So how okay. does that work? Yeah. How are the two uh, different? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. They are same, and yet there are differences. Same in the sense, of course, there is a very famous verse in the Shiva Purana which uh, uh, more or less the gist of it says that there is no difference between <clears throat> Shiva and Bhairava. It is only the Maya of Shiva that makes Bhairava appear different from Shiva. So that is a huge sort okay. of statement, you know, telling fundamentally that these are not different deities. 
uh, in this regards, I would say uh, uh, on a practical level, if you're doing the sadhana of Shiva or Bhairava, etc., um, for the sake of understanding, not necessarily something that you ask me that will you know, produce a quote from the Shastras to prove this, I may not be able to, but there's something that actually works on a practical level. Imagine Shiva is the primary deity, but the moment he enters into the cremation ground, he becomes Bhairava. Okay. So long as he's outside of the cremation ground, when you're worshipping him as Soma Skanda, when you're worshipping him in the other forms, if, if not at all, this, every form is wonderful, fantastic, everything is wonderful. The moment Shiva enters back into the cremation ground, he takes on the form of Bhairava. In fact, in the great battle oh. between, yeah, battle between the Asuras, when Shiva mm -hmm. destroys Andhaka Asura, in that uh, moment when he pins Andhaka and the Trishula and lifts him up, he is, it is Bhairava who's actually doing it. <coughs> He's, been, he's okay. the aggressive form of Shiva. Uh, All right. This information is useful in practical upasana of sadhana of uh, of Shiva as well as Bhairava. Uh, not only from the from the larger spiritual perspective, people do Shiva upasana. That's one thing. But if you are doing the upasana from the point of view of prayoga, which is application of power, which is a very important aspect of tantra sadhana, because tantras are not. Uh, happy with only the understanding that I need to close my eyes and feel blissful and happy. That's that's wonderful. But what happens to the Shakti that you have gained? If you say you are powerful, you have to give a demonstration of that into the outside world. It is only then that you know that there is a power. I have a power in the head which nobody is aware of. It's as good as non-existent. So this, uh, this application, this Prayoga, and that's why every text in the Tantras will mention the Prayogas at the end, uh, the application and... Um, this is where uh, this difference between Shiva and Bhairava becomes very important because Shiva, the moment he's into the cremation ground, he turns into Bhairava. Uh, being a cremation ground deity, Bhairava Upasana has uh, certain allowances, certain methods which are applicable to Bhairava which will not work with Shiva. For example, you can worship Bhairava using uh, the Panchatattvas that are there in the Tantras. Though in practice today, most of the Bhairava Upasana that happens, uh, sort of, it's fine to offer the uh, the vegetarian bhogs that are given to Bhairava, it's, it's quite fine. There's a list of things that he likes, uh, very useful, for example, if you give, uh, uh, if you make what in Bengali we call paish, uh, or even in the winter season we offer uh, gurer mishti, sweets made of uh, molasses, yeah. Those are things Bhairava loves very much, whereas if you make a paish, you cannot add sugar normally. So that's I mean, there's no harm in adding, but if you don't add it, it's better. These are things he likes. Then there are varas, various kinds of uh, the bhogs that are offered to Bhairava is well known in tradition. Along with it, as the sadhana goes deeper, you will have to offer what is known as karan, which is that ritualized, specifically uh, mantrically purified alcohol, which has been, uh, the curses from it has been removed because Every alcohol has three types of curses on it, so that's why it's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's mm -hmm. something that is not allowed in the Vedic religion, straight up. But Bhairava Upasana in the higher realms, as one goes, if you go really deep, this will come into play. Be absolutely certain of it. There's no way you can avoid this. If you go into oh. the depth, if it has not happened, it means that you have, your sadhana has not reached that depth. He is going to ask for that eventually because that is something he loves. To the extent that Avinav Gupta and the great masters of Kashmir, who were great upasakas of Bhairava, uh, forms like Swachanda Bhairava and others, they mention specifically the different types of uh, ingredients used to make alcohol and how they react in the consciousness, how wine, etc., has a link, tremendous link to the Tattva of Bhairava, etc. All these are there in the texts. There's no, uh, not something that has been created out of figment of imagination. And it's evident to a Bhairava Upasaka why Karan becomes important after a certain point. Till that point, there are Anukalpas, or substitutes for the actual thing. Coconut water, for example, or, uh, or gur soaked in water and then water offered to Bhairava, etc. So that is, being a cremation ground deity, this aspect will come in very prominently in Bhairava Upasana. On the other hand, if you are doing Shiva Upasana, you have to do it in the completely sattvic way, following all the uh, rules of normal rules of achara that is uh, in a Vedic Upasana. That is very important. So Shiva Upasana, you <coughs> cannot do that. Which is why if a, 
if a bhairava shivaling if a shivalinga for example we have shivalingas we have uh, lingas where bhairava can be worshiped specifically there are signs on that yantras of bhairava can be made etc those lingas can be worshiped with abhishekam of karan but you cannot do that on a shivalinga so these two are to be kept separate okay okay so shiva upasana requires the standard things of you have to be sattvic you have to offer only sattvic ingredients you do the abhishekam in the normal standard way which is to be done uh, mm. more or less um, uh, if you are vegetarian that is preferred actually if you can do it at a early morning you know without having too much of food etc those are wonderful the other thing is that uh, shiva is, the form of shiva is very subtle in my experience and experience of people who have actually uh, you know worshiped shiva a lot is extremely subtle so when we say that shiva is bhole we uh, it's a misconception among people i was seeing mm. uh, some comments somewhere uh, so uh, when we say shiva is bhole it does not mean that shiva is going to come so easily to you what it means is that his upasana paddhati is easier than other deities so if you were to uh, as the puranic story says there was a hunter who was the climb who had climbed on a tree on a shivaratri and uh, he was uh, you know uh, looking for a uh, deer or something and a leaf from the tree falls on a shivalinga and uh, because of that act three times it happens in the night so after death it is the shivaganas who come and take him instead of the yama and other deities who were taking mm. him to naraka etc so the idea is that shiva is satisfied with a small worship but this satisfaction is going to give you some blessings of shiva it is entirely different matter if you say that no i want siddhi of shiva i want to enter into a state of communion with shiva that is very 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 difficult that you have to transform yourself into a saint and for all measures it may take you multiple lifetimes of serious efforts of shiva upasana before he responds he is the kind of deity who is aware but he may not so easily come to you because he is at a very subtle level very subtle mm-hmm. level shiva upasana bhairava on the other hand because he is that form of shiva which deals with uh, transformation death for example directly link, links to death is cremation ground presence uh, so he is in a way close to the physical existence that we have he is a deity who is more closer slightly closer than the very transcendental realms in which shiva exists in the shiva loka he is somebody who comes down here closer and because he is closer mm-hmm. the one thing with bhairav upasana is that Uh, it will work much faster than shiva upasana given all things are constant if if uh, right. you know if, if if everything is right there's a decent upasaka he's told the right paddhati and uh, shiva and bhairava both of them are being worshiped it is much statistically much greater probability that you will have responses from bhairava much faster than you will get a response from shiva because he is closer to this plane so in fact uh, one of the things that i have experienced and that i was advised by people who were very great bhairav upasakas and uh, you know nature has been kind that i've actually had interaction with fantastic very very high caliber bhairav upasakas in my life or people who have attained to a close communion or sort of attained to siddhi of bhairav i've seen them i've experienced how they are so uh, if you take one step towards bhairava he will take two steps towards you he's like that Mm-hmm. see even even in our natural conception if you look at it from the historical point of view dogs are one of the things that got first domesticated and became sort of however through evolution it became a friend of the human race okay whatever mm-hmm. way it mm-hmm. happened i'm not going through the science of it mm-hmm. it's the same way he is a deity who is very close by he is a deity you call him once he'll take two steps towards you he is going to help you out he is going to act as a friend as a philosopher as a protector as a guide as a guru and everything if you call him that is the beauty of bhairavan that is why he is the primary deity to worship if you have to really experience the higher powers in the uh, tantric field because he is the one who brings the knowledge to the humans he is a guru he is a guru in the kola marga he is the uh, he is one of the divine uh, forms the ananda bhairava form is what from him comes the marg of the uh, you know the sri vidya sampradayas the the tripur sundari sampradayas of uh, which are associated with the kola path etc so uh, same way mahakal bhairava is there so bhairava forms are easier to invoke and experience relatively easier i am not saying that today you start tomorrow you're going to experience bhairava no you have to at least consistently carry on the upasana for 3 years if you get anything in a time less than 3 years it is not going to last with you anything less than that is useless 
थ्री इयर्स कंसिस्टेंटली भैरव उपासना आइदर यू विल ब्रेक अवे फ्रॉम द उपासना और इफ यू कैरी ऑन देर इज मोर और लेस श्योर चांस दैट यू विल गेट रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम द देवता so this okay. is fundamentally how you know shiva and bhairava differs right right before we move to the next question i have some doubts so let me get them clarified yeah. first so in the path of upasana or sadhana how important are the puranic stories uh, associated with bhairava or shiva for example the stories of bhairava uh, one story says that he was created by a strand of hair of shiva another one says bhairava is shiva himself so it's like is it is he like virbhadra or is he shiva himself uh, are these stories uh, you know they do they hold any importance in sadhana uh, they do hold an important sadhana uh, provided the the upasaka's mind has opened up a bit to understanding the tatva that is inherent in the story otherwise okay. if you get too fixated on the literal aspect of the story it will derail you from the sadhana it's that what i've seen with various people so mm-hmm. the primary the, the most fascinating story of bhairava that comes from some of the puranas is that he uh, there was this uh, conflict between brahma and vishnu and brahma yeah. uh, yes so brahma basically thinks that shiva has five heads i also have five heads what is the difference yes. i'm just telling that as story him. under the screen while he was yes. speaking yes right right mm-hmm. so he has and then um, th- there is another variation of the story where he gets fascinated with i think saraswati or uh, somebody specifically and in order to keep an eye on her he keeps developing one head after the other till five heads are formed and he is mm. not able to get out of his attachment and that is when out of uh, the anger of shiva the rudra energy of shiva bhairava is formed and he cuts off the fifth head of brahma with the little the nail of the little finger of his uh, left hand okay mm. so this story is fascinating story and then after that he gets into uh, the the sin of brahma hatya because brahma is the first brahmana brahma hatya yes. and then he carries that kapal of brahm of brahma in his hand it gets stuck in his hand and he roams around for 12 years shiva tells him that you go around here um, uh, he roams around bharatvarsha for 12 years eventually finally he comes to kashi and in kashi that kapal falls from his hand into a place called kapal mochan where there is the there's a tank right now and there is one of the bhairava temples are there um, mm. kapal mochan and uh, he settles down in kashi as the kotwal or the kshetrapala of kashi but this story is so important that in ancient times there used to be a vrata of bhairava upasakas known as mahavrata where once the bhairava diksha is given to somebody that individual would be given a human skull khappar brahmanda khappar in imitation of bhairava and he would carry and along with that there will be mantras of shiva and bhairava given to the upasaka by his guru he will handle that one object uh, that is the only possession he will have and for 12 years he will be roaming around in different paths uh, eating by begging in that skull whatever comes is given into that skull at night mm. he is not supposed to stay at in a in a area where people are staying so he has to get out of the town the village whether it's a cremation ground or a lonely place um, so that skull will be his only possession that is where he will eat that is where he will uh, any water he has to drink everything etc and in imitation of bhairava he will continue this for 12 years okay at 12 years doing this sadhana been while doing the bhairava mantras after the end of it he becomes a siddha of bhairava so so beautifully there are two things here one is that all our upasana paddhatis are imitation of the play the leela of the gods the different deities right. have done different activities at a cosmic scale and we humans we imitate those in order to imbibe certain tatvas of that devata into our being and that is how we succeed in this sadhana okay great, great. today the 12 year mahavrata may not happen for everybody it may happen mm-hmm. only in maybe few augur sampradayas etc not outside mm. but you get mm. the gist so bhairava upasana requires you to develop that innate fearlessness where eventually you are able to go about into a situation or a place where there you don't know anything uh, you don't have any friends family nothing uh, you know and you have only reliance on the mantra of bhairava and that is where the dogs become so important as i was explaining in those areas mm. it's where mm. those come into play acha the second thing we derive from this so he does um, at the spiritual level what he does is that cuts off brahma's head okay which head is it 
that hell which thought that I am creating everything. What is the difference between me and Shiva? Shiva is ego. five heads. I also ego hmm. exactly. Yes. So not only the ego, ego is the ego is of course there, but more importantly, he cuts off the thinking mind. One of the typical things that will happen if you keep doing Bhairav Upasana into greater depths, he will take you into a state where the thinking, the rationalizing mind will be cut off. So you will have an understanding of things at a more organic, more vital, more intuitive level. It is not something you will rationally understand and make add two and two, four and things like that and information collecting and gathering that the mind anyway keeps doing. And you realize eventually that the Brahmanda cupboard that Bhairava holds is nothing but the head of the Upasaka in his own hand. He grips the head, he removes the thinking process, he takes you into a state where you are governed by the intuition that he is going to manifest into your being. An intuition did not always be in the head, it can also come in the heart, it can come in the various parts of the body in different ways, etc. That is the fundamental tattva of Bhairava Upasana. Eventually, I'm saying repeating the word eventually because do not be under the illusion that you start tomorrow, start today and tomorrow is going to happen. This is going to take you years and depending on the purva samskara of the person, it will take years. But fundamentally, the greatest uh, joy, the greatest beauty, power, manifestation, excellence in Bhairava Upasana only starts when the thinking mind is transcended and Bhairava is the Devata who will do it for you eventually. If you hang on to him, if you allow him full, if you do not resist what he's trying to give you, if you approach him, he'll also approach you with certain energies. And if you do not resist, and if you persist in the sadhana for years, this is exactly what he will do. So this story is basically a demonstration of, at a cosmic level of things that are going to happen to the Upasaka at an individualized level in his own mind and body. Finally, he gets the sin of Brahma Hatya. Brahma Hatya means basically the idea there is a certain uh, there is a certain um, understanding of varnas we have. There is the four uh, chatur varna system. The Brahm, the uh, where you know the Brahmins are the uh, uh, have one set of activities, one set of gunas, etc., etc., etc. So Bhairav Upasana, as the depth, as one enters into greater depths, as I had mentioned, you will have to use things like karan, which is absolutely contrary to the Vedic path that is. Said, if there is one thing for which there is the strictest punishment in the Dharma Shastras of Manu and other texts, it is for consumption of alcohol. There is no respite given to it. Even everything else, there is still some prashtita. This is the harshest um, uh, injunctions against it. And that is the element that Bhairava will eventually bring into play if you go deeper into his sadhana. Whether you consume or not is irrelevant. He will demand, you will have to give. It comes at a later stage, not at stage one, but yes, that's what it is. The moment you're able to do that, what happens is that there is going to be an internal conflict between the, the, the acharam of the Vedic path and the acharam of the Tantric path. And that is why there are, uh, in reflection of this, there is to be various statements, both in the ancient Kashmiri texts, somewhere I had read that, and also in, uh, in the Shakta texts that, you know, um, outside you appear as a Shaiva, in the group you will appear as a Vaishnava, but internally you will be a Kola, which is that you, you keep your allegiances internal because people may not understand why you are doing this. It is the demand, it is the nature of the deity who makes you do it eventually. So these things come in from the main primary story of the Puranic story of Bhairava, but uh, unless you understand them, if you spend too much time taking the story literally, then it may derail you from sadhana. More useful is to actually carry on the sadhana and also reflect a bit once in a while. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, there was a blackout here. So I uh, was temporarily disconnected. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. Now we have questions five and six. Have you covered them already? Uh, uh, what are the questions? Could you read them? Okay, one was about the various forms of Bhairava and the other was hmm. about Batuk Bhairava. But I would like to extend my previous question and link it to this one. Okay. So, uh, because the question is about various forms of Bhairava. So, the natural thing is when you go through the Puranas and you are talking about uh, hmm. all these playing out at the cosmic level and how right. an Upasaka hmm. needs hmm. to uh, do his bit uh, in a way of spiritually replicating that act to mm. reach to reach the god but uh, mm. 
you know, there we also come to know about Ashtanga Bhairava, Ashta Bhairava, or 64 Bhairavas, and even 64 Matrikas, Yoginis. Yoginis. Yes. So, yes. so, so uh, how does this link and when exactly an Upasaka is, uh, you know, worshipping, what is the form of Bhairava he is worshipping? So, uh, the Puranic stories give you a broad overview of the Leela of the gods. How That yeah. is how the, the standard format of the Puranas, more or less. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, when it is translating, as I mentioned, the, some of the Tattvas in Bhairava Upasana uh, have some divergence from the Vedic path. Okay, For example, primarily the use of Karan. And then also in certain forms of Bhairava where you may have to use the... Uh, so, interestingly, the skull that he carries of Brahma is known as the Brahmanda Kapur. It's like the skull of the universe in his hand. Is that right. powerful a deity? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the Upasana Paddhati, from these stories, how does the actual Upasaka interact with Bhairava? How does he do his sadhana? This comes to us from the Tantras. Because in the Tantras, Bhairava becomes the primary guru. It is a Vidya where he is actually speaking to Bhairavi and telling the world how to go about this sadhana, how to worship that deity, what is a guru, what is a disciple, how to create the yantra, how to create the mantra, etc. Everything. He becomes the guru in that path. It is from the tantras, specifically the Rudrayamala tantra, which is one of the Mulagan texts of Bhairava Upasana, mm, uh, where we have various forms of Bhairava, mantras of Bhairava. Uh, similarly, in later texts like, uh, I think, Mahakal Samhita and other texts, also we get various uh, information regarding how to do Bhairava Upasana what are the mantras of Bhairava, etc. Plus, additionally, there's a lot of information that was passed down through the Sabar traditions where Bhairava is a very primary deity, by the way. Mm -hmm. In, in mm -hmm. Sabar means the non-Sanskrit traditions which are popular in North India specifically. I think, it, I don't know about South, whether they exist. Uh, North, definitely Sabar, uh, which was inspired by the Navanath, the Nath, Nath, Nath yogis. Okay? Yes. Uh, in that... Yeah, they use a lot of Bhairava Upasana. Uh, only thing is the mantras are non-Sanskrit. They could be in Hindi. Uh, they could be a bit of mix of um, Avadi. Uh, in some cases, even Bengali. Okay, uh, So it's a mix of things. And it works on the basis of complete uh, Guru Bhakti. The individual who is giving you, the Guru who is giving you, he must have realized mm. it. Only then he can give you the mantra. Right. So in here... Uh, among the Ashta Bhairavas, Ashta Bhairava Puja comes in, it, now it eventually integrates, this Bhairava Upasana integrates into the, the, sh, the broader spectrum of Shakti Upasana. So even when you are worshipping uh, Chandika or worshipping Durga, you will have to give some uh, mantra offerings, etc. to the Ashta Bhairavas. Uh, then not only Ashta Bhairavas, there are, uh, as I said, the Bhairava Agamas are there initially. Bhairava Agamas are 64 in number. So there are also in some uh, references, to 64 names of Bhairavas along with 64 Yoginis. So there used to be a very strong cult of Bhairava and Yogini Upasana, which has kind of uh, sort of lost itself today and you don't find much evidence of it or you don't find Upasakas who are who worship Yoginis along with Bhairavas together, uh, except for some, uh, uh, you know, more, more, how would I put it, uh, not necessarily in depth manner, but more in a, Karsari manner, there is some upasana of that happens in some shakta sampradayas. But uh, previously, uh, there used to be a whole school of uh, kola upasana where Bhairava along with the yoginis used to be worshipped in Panchadatva system, the Panchamakara system, etc. Today, the forms of Bhairava that is most popular coming to the more practical aspect is Vatuka Bhairava in a way. <coughs> is more popular yes. than Kala Bhairava? Is more popular than Mahakala yes. Bhairava? Yes. The Primary reason being that Vatuka Bhairava is Vatuka Bhairava in the form of a child, seven, eight, nine year old child, maybe. Okay. And when you look at the mantras of Vatuka, achha, being a child, his upasana is easily done, easier, relatively easier inside the home. A grihastha can do Vatuka Bhairava upasana. There is mm. no problem at all. In fact, the best Vatuka upasakas are all grihasthas. They lead a family life, normal family life, no problem with Vatuka upasana. He comes in the form of a child. But interestingly, Vatuka Zutpatti shows that he was formed by the blessings of the Mahavidyas. Uh, it is Shiva himself, it is Rudra himself who incarnated as Vatuka, as a child. So that to protect hmm. all the Shakti Upasakas 
from the malefic negative disturbing influences whatever they may be from wherever it may be whether it's human whether it's supernatural whether it's from anything else whether it's the grahas everything motuka is the one stop deity who integrates such powers within him he has the powers of all the eight bhairavas inside him he has powers of even uh, deities like mahalakshmi mahakali mahasaraswati inside him he has powers of the mahavidyas inside him he is a form that integrates all the powers inside him which is whatever is there in mahakal kal bhairava every bit of it is there inside vatuka only thing is that the approach is different and this approach details of it i'll not go into because this is something which should come from your guru it should not come from a online podcast like that and then the value of the information will be lost you will not know what to do and how to apply it in practice but yes effectively vatuka contains within himself everything you just know you have to know how to access that you have to know how to enter into an equation with him eventually that is why vatuka is important that is why he is so popular because he can be worshiped at home there is no problem with vatuka upasana at home if somebody gives the mantra upadesham and we say he is not just vatuka vatuka means a small child right uh, yes uh, yes yes vatuka is a small child he is the apad dharaka vatuka which is apad was a demon who used to cause problems he rudra came in the form of vatuka to remove that demon apad apad is a term which comes even colloquially in i think in bengali also we use also i don't know yes in yes. hindi also so basically it's anything that is causing trouble and it could be any form of trouble it could be trouble mm-hmm. to your health it could be trouble we think when we say bhairava upasana or when we talk of fears we think that it is only fears of ghosts and things like that not at all mm-hmm. one of the typical mm-hmm. fears is suppose you have to go to your office and you have a your boss doesn't like you okay you yes. that's a fearful situation you have mm-hmm. to uh, meet somebody you don't like you, you are somebody who gets stressed in uh, social gatherings or uh, it could be anything anything in the world or mm. you you're, you're mm. fearful that you don't have uh, your finances are not up to the mark you know you have to pay your emis you don't know where the money is going to come your job is having a problem etc all these are sources of fear everything vatuka is the deity who can handle all of it and um, bhairava is the reason why i stress so much on bhairava upasana uh, one of the reasons uh, b- before i forget it just struck my mind right now uh, bhairava the, the, is a deity who can handle the negative impacts of the crude grahas whether it's saturn mars rahu ketu he can handle all four of them if your upasana is correct ah he is not going to vanish those graha impacts completely from your life nobody can but he is going to bring a cushion an umbrella on your head so that you have the ability to sustain the karmic pressure because fundamentally this pressure is because you might have done something in the past that's why it's coming anyway it's not universe doesn't give you something that you don't deserve but vatuka mm-hmm. if he is kind to you he'll give you that umbrella on a very bad weather so that you at least can survive and he is extremely good in handling all the four kura grahas and how to navigate those kura grahas he has is like he has the aggression of bhairava combined with the intelligence of ganapati where hmm. there is to be intelligently done he will tell you to intelligently do it where there is to be force applied he'll make you apply that force and this whole business happens in a very intuitive manner once an upasaka enters into the state where the thinking mind is cut off which i was explaining you that is the tatva of the kappa in his hand once that is hmm. cut off he will organically give you that inspiration do this do that go there etc and you'll see that things will magically start working like it's like a big pattern and you will realize that it's, you are just a you're just a pawn in the chess game that's all something else is working behind so what right. a kobasana is good for everybody it's in, regardless of age regardless of situation in life uh, grihasthas can do what a kobasana there's no problem in it if you take an just take an upadesha from somebody and you can start off what a kobasana right the next question is on mm-hmm. swarnakarshana bhairava uh, and what we know about is the form which is either red or blue in complexion clothed in golden dress has <clears throat> four right. hands uh, you know holds a golden vessel gives wealth prosperity etc etc and then uh, you know uh, he is said to have 32 hands also the yeah. shape of a bird or golden complexion terrible teeth uh, human form above the hip things like that so uh, Uh, is this allegory is this metaphor or is uh, is there a also a spiritual significance of these forms swarna krishna uh, bhai yeah 
so um, the way i look at it whenever there's a description of a devata i take it as exactly as it is it is not even it is both a spiritual allegory because the iconography holds information about the devata the nature of the deity but also it is real in its own plane it is not something just you know non existent no it has an existence that form exists in its own plane so you are trying to worship the deity the deity wants that form uh, because through that image of the devata to the iconography of the devata tremendous amount of information is passed on to the subconscious of the upasaka in fact uh, except for you know uh, the shastras uh, the dharma was not meant only for scholars that you you know 10 books you marked up and 100 tattvas you know and you write another 100 books on it and you feel very happy about it no so uh, what about the people who may not have that um, amount of shastric knowledge you have a certain amount of knowledge the guru gives you the sadhana but how do you get those tattvas if you meditate on those iconography of the deity if your mantra sadhana along with that is working properly the deity itself will reveal the information that is the beauty of the iconography that is the beauty of dhyana on the iconography because it captures all the information of the deity in fact it is a huge subject in itself and i mean only from the upasaka's perspective i am not interested in the historical and other perspectives which other people may have from the upasaka's perspective every single ayudha that a deity holds the arrangement of his legs his eyes or her eyes or or what setting everything holds a clue to the nature of the devata and how you may attain certain degree of closeness to the deity but it is not to be revealed on day one because as it happens with all uh, spiritual knowledge if it comes to the one who is not fit for it the adhikar tattva is always working to the unfit if it comes he will he or she will digest it out will vomit it out and cause further problems both for himself and for the others <clears throat> swarnakarshana is a form that is popular in specifically in the sri vidya sampradayas as many people might be knowing and uh, he is a deity who who's a form of bhairava who resides in the subterranean worlds he is not while we were talking about bhairava forms who are there bhairava fundamental is a deity is close to the physical plane brings about transformation swarnakarshana is a form who remains in a very he remains in a subterranean world uh, the, and governs fantastic amount of wealth in huge amount of wealth in fact the stories say that when uh, lakshmi and kuber ran out of wealth i don't remember the exact story but gist of it was when these deities whom we worship for wealth ran out of wealth they worship swarnakarshana and swarnakarshana gave them wealth so he has access to tremendous amount of wealth the other feature of swarnakarshana is that he is the only form of bhairava who uh it is mentioned is a bit like vishnu in some senses which means that the offerings have to be entirely sacred he is the form of bhairava where ha huh, the all the offerings that have to be given are uh, fully sacred offerings swarnakarshana sadhana properly done mantra sadhana works very well uh, to bring about some degree of financial prosperity and not just prosperity so uh, for a for a somebody who contemplates deeper so a question may come what is the difference between lakshmi upasana and swarnakarshana if i have a wealth issue whom should i worship so there are various ways in which you can find this answer from jyotisha and other places but more or less lakshmi causes not only a wealth in the sense of actual um, financial wealth lakshmi can also bring you certain degree of emotional wealth uh, certain wealth of influence and various other ranges of lakshmi are there uh, but the thing with lakshmi upasana can be that the wealth may or may not be sthita it may come and it yes. may go very easily swarnakarshana is entirely different is upasana will take a little bit more time the mantra has to be completed and if it is done in the proper way in the sad way it is meant to be done you do the mantra sadhana you do dasham shoma of it of the mantra tarpana marjan abhishekam bhojanam everything full step by step you do with puja and sankalpa more or less 80% chance you will see some effect of that mantra it is a thing that works invariably this is the beauty of the mantra shastras that we have inherited from the rishis from the past etc swarnakarshana gives you wealth is going to stay with you it is not going to go away so easily that he has the power to do kilana to wealth when he gives wealth to somebody it may last for generations and it could be mm-hmm. huge amounts of, absolutely huge amounts of wealth 
fantastic amounts of wealth, even wealth from sources that you cannot imagine also. So there is Swarnakarshana more or less um, is a fantastic uh, devata to worship for wealth uh, related things. And specifically those who are into Sri Vidya Upasana initiation, I think they already have the necessary, uh, you know, the so let's say the Adhikara to worship Swarnakarshana. There's no problem in that. Uh, only thing is that the worship has to be done consistently, which is perhaps the same for all deities. You have to complete the mantra nushthan and do the homas and things like that, etc. Mm. It will work. Swarnakarshana is one form. So the, the important thing to remember mm. with Swarnakarshana is that his upasana, upasana has to be sattvic, first of all. Sattvic. And there are certain combinations in horoscopes that may indicate uh, somebody attaining more success with Swarnakarshana than other forms. But more or less Swarnakarshana is uh, uh, his, his Upasana. Uh, in some ways is slightly takes, it, Swarnakarshana Upasana will take you longer time than Vatuka Bhairava Upasana by the way. Okay. He is not as fast as Vatuka. Vatuka is extremely fast. Mm. But uh, if he blesses you, uh, the wealth situation changes in a very fixed manner. He will ensure that the wealth stays. If that blessing comes to an individual, it has to, but it has to go through that process of actually doing first a Swarnagarshana puja, then uh, you make a mm -hmm. yantra of Swarnagarshana, you do the mantra sadhana properly, uh, whatever is the requisite amount, lakhs of japa, and then you do homa of it and tarpana and things like that. Then the mantra activates, not only activates, you will see more or less, let's say 70% chance that you will find a sudden um, uh, strong, you know, uh, in, influx of wealth or sources of wealth, even areas where you might not have thought about. So unconventional sources of wealth also are very easily governed by Swarnakarshana. Somebody earning from the internet, somebody earning from stock markets, these are things Swarnakarshana mm. can very easily govern, provided you know you have entered, your person has entered to that depth. Right. Uh, the next question is on Akasha Bhairava, the uh, one uh, representation okay. of uh, this deity you've shown we are again showing on the screen so what is the significance of this form <coughs> this so is Akash by the way in Kathmandu this one is in yeah. Kathmandu yeah. it's very very famous image very famous hmm. image so Akasha Bhairava is one of the oldest forms of Bhairava oldest ancient forms of Bhairava oldest means I mean ancient we find references of Akasha Bhairava from the time when Bhairava Upasana was popular in uh, Kashmir and other regions where he was the primary Devata who inspired such tremendous uh, upsurge of knowledge of, uh, you know, uh, arts, culture, aesthetics, everything. So uh, he is almost, uh, he is, the, we know the Puranic story how, you know, uh, when Vishnu Avatara, the man line Narsimha Avatara was not able to control his anger after the destruction of the Asura, uh, that is when nothing else was working, that uh, Shiva takes the form of um, Sarabha. Sarabha. Take, yeah, Sarabha, he comes and then he there is a fight and then we have two different Puranas, whether the Shaiva and the Shakta or the uh, Vaishnava Puranas you know, uh, differentiating that who wins the fight, etc. So we are not going to the controversy aspect of it, but that form of uh, uh, that form of Shiva uh, is sort of is is actually a Bhairava. Is he comes down here for that tremendously powerful um, manifestation of Bhairava that comes is that is also known as the Akash Bhairava form, and he is. He takes the form of a huge bird, tremendously powerful bird. And Akash Bhairava, from the from the Upasaka's point of view, Akash Bhairava is, let's say, the one Bhairava who's the master of Sattu Samhara. To destroy enemies, there is no prayoga, no worship of Bhairava, no form of Bhairava that is as excellent as Akash Bhairava. But Akash Bhairava Upasana is also very tough, Mantra Upasana. It requires certain depth and certain degree of uh, stability inside to handle the impact and the effect that it causes because Akash Bhairava also uh, along with him comes uh, it's it's integrated within it. it's not so much as differentiated if one goes deeper into Akash Bhairava Upasana there is also going to be involvement of Shulini Durga, Pratyangira and other forms of uh, Devi who are very very fierce their fierce means their whole existence is to destroy negatives and whether it's extreme avichara karma huge amounts of black magic or something like that. 
which is or deadly enemies are there etc then uh, then these forms are to be invoked ideally so akash bhairava is very very powerful uh, it should in my opinion akash bhairava upasana should never be done just like that picking up some books and texts and here and there no unless you have a stable guru unless you have already uh, attained to some degree of proficiency with bhairava tattva and some sadhanas at least at least perhaps preferably you have a sh- initiation into uh, tantra sadhana etc and your guru gives you the permission to do akash bhairava sadhana then only you enter into it because the mantra is super aggressive and it is going to cause various uh, interesting and even frightful experiences to the sadhaka even it is done in the right setting that's important the right setting when akash bhairava sadhana works so he is for extreme sattu samara is like uh, where his prayogas are done it is almost almost impossible to stop right. so like that okay the next question is on the similarities or differences between bhairava and rudra are they the same or the diff- or the, are they different ah, so as i mentioned uh, if you read the mantras and the details of the vatuka bhairava upasana you'll see that he is none other than rudra himself who has come in the form of vatuka to remove the apadas and the troubles and the problems that afflict any shakti upasaka anywhere so he is for from the practical point of view look at him that rudra himself becomes vatuka bhairava in the form of a child he takes the bhairava form as a child and he comes to aid the upasaka in his sadhana and so that there are no nothing disturbs him there are no other uh, problems that come so as far as you know it's possible to handle those problems okay uh, the next question is uh, does one mandatorily need to take 21 or 41 days as the case may be sankalp along with pledge for satvika before getting into batuk bhairava upasana to get his grace no it is not necessary first of all uh, you have to understand that and that this what i'm uh, telling is genetically applied to all devata upasanas by the way not just bhairava upasana so if you have to do anushthana before you do that you first enter into the normal mantra krama of the devata you do the mantra sadhana for some time and these are things ideally that should come from the guru your source whoever has given you the mantra sadhana he or she is the person who should guide you into this okay so he will make an assessment that are you fit to do a 21 day uh, sadhana or intensified anushthana of the devata or should you be better off trying to do a few malas of the mantra and carry on for some period of time maybe 6 months or maybe a year or something like that and then go into a more uh, sankalpa oriented sadhana it it cannot be a thumb rule for everybody it depends on the individual and this information must ideally come from the guru or if you are advanced enough if your discrimination power is good then you can decide on your own but more or less the thing is that and it applies for all deities the moment you take a 21 day 40 day etc sankalpa you have to adhere to the sankalpa you cannot break the sankalpa and here i may add one thing for women specifically this question comes up very often so if you take a 40 day sankalpa and if there are four days of periods uh, in between etc so all you need to do is those days do not do the mantra at all do nothing mm. do not enter the puja room uh, somewhere else you can sit and do manasika japa of the mantra without rudraksha without mala without touching anything just manasika japa and after those four or five days is over you again restart restart means not from the beginning say you have completed 20 days of the sadhana and then there is four days of gap then from the fifth day again the counting will be as if it's from the 21st day those four days are not to be counted they don't okay. cause a break in the anushthan okay okay mm. Mm. right so though that is not taken as a break in the anushthan you just continue from the next day onwards that's all this is at the initial stages at a very high stage of sadhana even those four days you can do sadhana because then uh, that uh, individuals that woman that ladies mind has become integrated with the mantra so strongly that even those four days you cannot stop but that comes later we we are uh, that's in my opinion not something advised at day one but the upasana can be started with simple nitya bhairava upasana yes in fact okay. uh, the best upasana to start for bhairava is not even batuka it just do the nama mantra bhairava om bhairava namaha that's mm. it this mantra 
is extremely powerful, extremely useful. People don't understand. They think that it's something too simple. No. On the contrary, you do few lakh japa of this mantra. Few lakh japa means basically about, uh, say, 1,000 malas of this mantra is uh, about 1 lakh plus some more. About 927 mm -hmm. malas or 925 malas is about 1 lakh japa. The rest is a buffer amount. So if you do few thousand malas of this mantra, your mind and body will get tuned to the Bhairava Tattva. And some of the other form of Bhairava is going to come and start slowly interacting with you in subtle ways, not directly. Bhairava is not going to come so easily in front of you. But he will send sort of, let's say, nimitta signals or something like that. It will start happening. Mm -hmm. So that is a very good mantra to start off. It is a very basic mantra. This mantra doesn't even require too much of uh, complications or huge amount of... If, if other things are set, uh, if common sense understanding of the person says that he or she is okay to do sadhana, then japa of this mantra is fine. A few malas of japa is okay to do. It's not a problem. Okay. Now, how to handle the effects of this upasana? Anger, fearlessness, mm -hmm. these things can be experienced by the upasaka. So how yes. does he handle that? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, every deity has his oh, his or her nature. Okay. Mm. And uh, anger is something that will manifest if you go deeper into Bhairavupasana. That is that is there. It's it's not a normal human anger. It's like a divine anger. It's a righteous mm. anger that comes. Okay. You see something wrong, immediately it will organically it will burst up in your head. But it will not last for long. It will go away immediately. It's not something you will, you know, uh, hang on and stick, you know, grab and carry on for days and months. No, not that type of anger. That is human anger. His anger is that it rushes out spontaneously and then it again subsides back to normal. Uh, no, there is no easy way to deal with this except to train yourself to control anger to the degree that is possible. And it is not just Bhairava, by the way. If you worship, say, Kali, if you worship Ugratara, if somebody is very extremely competent to worship Chinnamasta, deities like that, anger mm. is going to be there. It's You cannot escape that. On the other hand, if you're, uh, there are other deities, not just this. So every deity will have its own certain specific gunas, tattvas and nature. Those will reflect into you and how you deal with it. Mm, it is possible that you may worship a very mild deity. And that worship has actually attained to a very positive state and powerful state. That mildness will reflect so intensely on you that even at a situation where some amount of anger can get a work done for you, it's easier because some um, in certain situations an anger uh, may be helpful even. There your mildness is mm. going to cause mm. you more material troubles than anything else. So there is no thumb rule to how to deal with this. If you do intense Durga Upasana also anger will come by the way. She is extremely ferocious. Chandika is very ferocious. It's not that, you know, not so simple. So these things, there is no easy way. You have to learn to deal with it. Or the other way is that <clears throat> for people in Sri Kula, you can worship some of the forms of some of the uh, integrating Bhairava Upasana, intense Bhairava Upasana if you're doing very intense Bhairava Upasana. You have to balance right. it out with some amount of Devi Upasana. Uh, milder forms of Devi Upasana. So if you add Bhairava and Kali together, then to it's nuclear blast. Then you can remove okay. Pritta also. Ah, mm -hmm. Then uh, mm -hmm. you can do anything just about. But that is, must have that self-control has to develop eventually. And there is no easy way for it. See, it mm -hmm. comes back mm -hmm. to the same thing. And when we, um, uh, if you look at the Bhagavad Gita and a very simplest understanding, he's saying, the Lord is saying various places, Krishna is saying that you have to go beyond anger and this and that etc all the the slokas it repeats various times i have seen yes. people who have mugged up the gita cover to cover but there's no control over anger no lack of trouble internalization is a very serious problem there is mm. no easy way out of this there's nobody who can just you know do a flip your fingers and vanish anger khatam. Mm. you have to work mm. on yourself and slowly 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 get things under control the devata upasana Still, Bhairava Upasana is wonderful, I say. Why? Because if there is some Kripa of Bhairava, and it comes relatively faster than other deities, by the way, as I mm. mentioned, Bhairava is the form is more closer to us in a sense. He is going to protect you mm. in a lot of ways. And he ensures that you do not deviate from the path. That's one of the blessings that Bhairava gives. If you continue okay. with Upasana for three to four years, unbroken, 
মানে হোয়াট এভার হ্যাপেন্স এভরি ডে ইউ ডু ডু নট হ্যাভ টু ডু আ লট অফ বাসেনা ফিক্স হাউ মাচ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু ডু বাট ক্যারি উইদাউট ব্রেক ফর থ্রি টু ফোর ইয়ার্স হি ইজ গোয়িং টু হ্যান্ড হোল্ড ইউ অ্যান্ড মেক শিওর দ্যাট ইউ নেভার এভার ফল ডাউন দ্যাট ইজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য ব্লেসিংস অফ ভাইরাম হি ক্যান সেন্স ডেঞ্জার মাচ ফাস্টার দ্যান এভারি ডিএলস ইটস জাস্ট লাইক ইমাজিন হোয়াট আর দি প্রপার্টিজ অফ ক্যানাইন the ability to smell smell things from a distance same way even before a danger is coming to your life way before that he will tell you if your connection to him is proper that this is going to this is this kind of a trouble is brewing up and how exactly you should do behave in order to bypass it to whatever degree it's possible things like that so that is a blessing for the anger part you have to work on yourself you can try doing some other uh, sadhanas which which may be useful in fact um, meditation is a very good thing to control anger many mm. upasakas do not spend any time in meditation only mantra japa is not enough it's very good no doubt but spend some time exclusively not with the mantra just meditating on the devata just meditating on the devata uh, or meditating on a form like shiva for example shiva yes. meditation if it starts working it is going to slightly bring control to these emotions anger and things like that so it almost covers the next question which was a corollary whether this uh-huh. upasana bhairava upasana can help overcome fear and anxiety see you almost yes. cover that that question yes. it definitely takes care of uh, overcoming fear anxiety and various psychological issues whatever they may be but remember it is the key to the sadhana is not do not expect uh, any miracles happening in day 1 and day 2 and in a month's time or anything like that you have mm. to consistently mm. carry on and as i said 3 to 4 years that is the minimum time if you want to go really deep into bhairava upasana 12 years anything less than 12 years is it's not well cooked right right the next question is very fundamental in nature is tantric okay. initiation needed for bhairava upasana uh, it depends on uh different sampradayas have different opinions on it if you are into a sri vidya sampradaya then uh, perhaps anyway you will have initiation and you uh, then after the initiation your guru may give you an upadesham to do bhairava sadhana on the other mm-hmm. hand uh if you are more aligned to the sabar paddhatis of bhairava sadhana and by the way the nath sabar sampradayas have done far more bhairava upasana than the tantric sampradayas of today let's be very blunt about it I, in my experience the best some of the best bhairava upasakas are people who come from the sagar sampradayas then the traditional whether it's kalikula or shrividya okay their engagement with bhairava because their sadhanas are how would i put it there is a certain rawness in the sadhana uh, their the settings in which they do the sadhanas are kind of raw and that setting the bhairava sadhanas work very well number 1 number 2 uh devi upasana requires more rules than bhairava sadhana there is still in bhairava that element of what we call bhole baba um uh, you know some some blessings or something like that that can come mm. uh, but <clears throat> in devi upasana the rules are far stricter than uh, anything else okay so so that is why i think devi upasana requires more initiation orientation is very strong in in the tantric format of um, devi upasana uh, bhairava upasana basic starting if you take even if you don't have an initiation at least if you consult somebody who has done bhairava upasana or if you have take upadesham from somewhere and you start off uh, that can also work okay now the last question we are taking from uh, your wall where you had made the announcement for this program it's a very okay. long comment and there are actually multiple questions in it but okay. i'll try to rephrase it because reading them out will take a very long time okay. so this uh, person who posted a comment on your wall said that you suggested regular worship of fierce deities bhairava mm-hmm. devi narasimha hanuman varai mm-hmm. etc mm-hmm. now and the question is apart from intensifying personal sadhana dedicated mm-hmm. to a singular deity mm-hmm. as uh, shri guru mm-hmm. rohit arya also talked about the uh, other day and he mm. keeps uh, uh, you know he has multiple posts on this on facebook and he's okay. also made uh, youtube videos on this mm. so mm. what is that thing that layman like this man person says he can implement on a regular basis which would invoke mm. these energies for the protection and revival 
of the entire community. He has written uh, Sanatana Dharma. So, mm -hmm. and then the next question is a reference to Muslims. How can okay. we, as, as individuals, weaken the occult factor in Islam? Uh, first of all, these questions, okay. So, uh, uh, to do anything, uh, to work for the protection of Dharma at the spiritual and the occult level, first you have to develop your own capacity. So, mm -hmm. your sadhana has to be very solid. If you are not doing solid sadhana, then there is no group getting together and doing it will not work. It's not that simple. So you, the best thing you can do is that you do your whichever deity upasana you are doing. Uh, if you are confused, start with Ganpati, then move to somebody a little extreme, a little one of the deities who are, as I mentioned, um, the Ugra forms, whether it's Bhairava, mm -hmm. whether it's Narasimha, these forms specifically. Because I mm -hmm. believe that we are at a stage where everything is very... Um, uh, nearing a tipping point yes uh, not not only that let's put it in different if we use a different way of looking at it the gunas are very highly stacked in the rajaguna and the tavaguna factors so satvi kupasanas are not going to protect you let's be very clear about it it's fine you can feel happy and very moralistically high and you know you can get on a balloon and fly up in the air and believe that you are very high up but mm -hmm. uh, when things go bad, it is going to go bad for everybody. So given the predominance of the Raja and Tamaguna factors, you will need deities who are aggressive enough to handle that. And in this uh, worship of uh, Bhairava, worship of Hanuman, worship of Narasimha, to a degree, etc., is much useful because they will also respond relatively faster. Okay. And also Ma Durga. I'm, and I do not mean very complicated Tantric Upasana because this is not so much for the Siddhi of the Devata. What I mean mm -hmm. is that regularly you do something for the deity so that you gain into a degree of... Uh, 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 you gel with the power of the Devata. That energy of the deity works through you. You inspire 10 other people to do that. Then together, once in a while, you sit together and you pray. You do the sadhana together and then you pray that let us let the deity protect... Sanatana Dharma, uh, bring mm, an uplift mm. of Dharma, an awakening of Dharma among people, and also protect it from enemies which are visible and invisible who work against Dharma. This is the best thing you can do. And so follow, yeah. follow yeah. standard methods of Upasana. Do not mm. experiment in these things. Absolutely not. It will backfire. Because if you have to ask this question, it, uh, I am assuming that you are doing some sadhana, I'm sure, but it has to go to some more depth before you can uh, actually expect to have a solid result with the deity. Uh, so do not experiment, do not do things which are contrary to the well-established traditional paths. Follow those. So, which means that if you do Bhairava, uh, take some advice from somebody, start with the simple Bhairava mantra. Uh, if you do Narasimha, you can do Narasimha, nothing else. If, if you don't do anything, then the uh, Ashtuttara Nama of uh, Lord Narasimha or the Kavaja of Narasimha. If you do Hanuman, you can do Ashtuttara Namas, Kavajas, or you can do Hanuman Chalisa or some this kind of stotras. But take that. Or if you do worshipping Madurga, you can take the uh, names of Durga or the 32 names of Durga. Intensify this and gather together a people, group uh, who can do this. And then you do the sadhana collectively and you pray that let the deity protect dharma in and around that space. That's very important. Another thing mm. very crucial which people do not understand, that's primarily because they may not have engaged themselves with a lot of uh, uh, result-oriented prayogas and all that. So if you just sit together, 15 of you, and do Hanuman Chalisa and think that let Lord Hanuman protect dharma across the universe, it is not going to happen. Think of your own locality within the geographical area where you are. Let the energy of the sadhana that you are doing manifest itself in the physical plane in and around you first. You are sitting here and influencing something 2000 miles away in another part of India is not going to happen so easily. You will have to reach a very high state of communion with the deity. But what you can do, gather together, do the standard sadhanas and pray that in and around you there are some changes in this direction that happens. So the next related questions he asked was whether this ritual involves mm -hmm. about 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day or uh, mm -hmm. also includes havan anushthan etc no don't go into havan i am mm -hmm. of the opinion that havan is something fire rituals are something to be done only after you have done sadhana of the deity of the mantra properly <clears throat> it is not something you can jump into it is going to it has its own repercussions if you do that 
Now, when fire is not something to play around with, it's very powerful, it's very beautiful. But look at the way where traditional sampradayas do it, whether it's Vedika sampradayas, you speak to, listen to the pravachans of Shankaracharyas, go to the tantric sampradayas, the old traditional tantric sampradayas, go to the old nath sampradayas, even nobody is going to allow you to do havan on day one until your mantra shakti is working. This is what the system was set in place for thousands of years. Don't tamper with it. If you do, it will have its own pound of flesh to take from you someday. That's how mm. it is. So that's why I mentioned that better it is for people to first do the normal upasana in that sense. You gather together, um, whether it's Hanumanji or whether it's Bhairava or whether it's Narasimha, you sit together, you do the sadhanas, you generate that energy and you pray and together collectively. Okay, After you have done sufficient amount of these sadhanas to a certain degree and sufficient depth and all that, then you may think of entering into the Agni Tattva, ritual of the same thing, but not before that. And that has its own, that is powerful, no doubt, but because it's powerful, it has to be used in its own, uh, in the right way, in the right sense. But this one, getting together and just, start, you know, uh, chanting names, hundred names, or things like that, that can be yeah. done with, uh, that doesn't require too much of restrictions or uh, the adhikaras are easier for that. And uh, should these people who form the group be initiated into an order formally? No, not necessarily. See, that's why I say, no, you take names of the deities. Uh, Ashtottara Nama doesn't need any initiation of a deity. So, and something I mentioned before as well, to do the names of a Devata, you need nobody's permission. You just need a bit of common sense. Is the deity gelling with you? Somebody who is extremely feared of fearful of Kali, and you ask mm. that person to do 100 names of Kali, obviously there's going to be a negative reaction, not because Ma Kali is going to cause anything. Your own mind is going to react against you. Okay. And mm. it will bring fear. So that common sense understanding has to be there. More or less to take a deity like Hanumanji is widely worshipped across India. And I don't think anybody is scared of Hanuman. Okay. You worship him, you rever him, you love him, but you're not scared of him. Nobody's scared of Hanumanji. In the normal formations, I'm not talking about the, um, you know, the, the extreme forms of Hanuman mm. is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Ashtottara Nam, 108 names of Narasimha, of Hanuman, of any deity, it is free for everybody to do. Provided you are able to gel with basic, basic gelling with the Devata Tattva is there. If you're too scared of the deity, don't approach. That's as simple as that. And that caution has to be coming from within you. Okay. So I think we have taken some of the most important questions from uh, the online space. We also received several questions mm -hmm. during uh, this program, but uh, most of them were repetitions of uh, what we have already covered. Right. Uh, and of course, uh, a session of one and a half hours was never going to be enough <laughs> for this vast subject. Right. And uh, so we regret uh, the fact that not all questions could be taken. But it was so wonderful to have you on the show, Rajashi. I'm sure that we can, as we had discussed earlier uh, mm. in my conversation with you, that you would surely agree to uh, come once again and this time to speak on Kali. Because that was the original idea. Original you, plan, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you, I thought because Shivaratri is coming. so <laughs> Yes, yes. But this session yes. has been so wonderful. I'm sure it has benefited lots and lots of people. And as I said in the beginning, that people outside India are also watching us. Mm. So it's good for dharma, good for our yes. community, uh, good for I, Hinduism. As, a, as yeah. a concluding remark, I would just like to state that uh, in my experience, and I have introduced many people to Bhairava Upasana over the years, it is one of the best things in Kali Yuga. Bhairava is a Devata who is fit to handle the complexities, difficulties that arise in Kali Yuga. A little bit of devotion, a little bit of mantra sadhana, simple mantra. Do not go into complicated. Some Upadesham you take from somebody and start with the simplest of sadhanas and uh, provide some amount of naivedyam to the deity, continue with it, some blessings will start coming. Bhairava, you take one step towards him, he'll take two steps towards you. Only thing is you have to consistently carry on not one month, two months, three to four years. And that is, that is by the way, in this time scales in which the Devadas operate, three to four years is blink of an eye for them. It's nothing. That's why he's called fast. Because he'll respond in three to four years. Definitely, if you can carry on, his blessing is going to come. Other deities will take you <laughs> 10 to 12 lifetimes. Even then also, they may not look at you. That they have mm. their own systems. 
But that is why I believe in Kali Yuga Bhairav Upasana is extremely good. He is a friend, philosopher, guide, protector. He becomes everything for you. And he will take you where you are destined to go. That's his beauty. Right, right. May, may the it blessings also, of Bhairava be on everybody. It also reminds me of that part of your discourse today where you made a very nuanced difference that mm. uh, Shiva, Bhairava are not easy gods, but their Upasana, Bhairava mm. Upasana is relatively easy. It's not that the right. god is easy to get. It's yeah. the upasana that is easier to perform, yes. relatively, relatively speaking. It yes. was so wonderful to have you on the show. Uh, dhanyavad, uh, Rajarshi. Dhanyavad to all the audience, whoever is uh, watching us in India and abroad, and who will watch us once this live session is over, the recording, I mean. So once again, although this need not be stated every time, but since so many people keep asking, any link that has been shared to you for a live telecast, if you miss that, it does not mean that the link will stop working. If you click on it later on, it will work as a recording. You can hmm. catch up anytime. So uh, do that. And uh, uh, once again, lots of thanks to all of you. Har Har Mahadev. Har Har Mahadev. Har Har Mahadev. Namaste to everybody.